give it to a lineman is you got to fumble it. He cannot take it and hand it to the national championship for Nebraska. Home run ball. Jackson has it. The All-American tight end is going in, and Oklahoma takes the lead. Here's Homer Jordan lofting the sixth quarter. into the end zone, touchdown Nelson. Millhouse on the flip and into the record books, West Virginia. Welcome to the season finale of Inside the Orange Bowl. I'm Andrea Ocampo. And I'm Dieter Kurtenbach. Join us as we recap the 2014 Discover Orange Bowl and the many events surrounding the game. We'll also take a look at the highlights from the Metro PCS Orange Bowl Basketball Classic, and then we'll chat with the Orange Bowl's new president, Louis Bouet, as he takes office. Congratulations to the Clemson Tigers, the 2014 Discover Orange Bowl champions. They defeated the Ohio State Buckeyes in a high-scoring game that came down to the wire. Let's take a look back at the memorable matchup. Thanks, guys. I'm here at the 2014 Discover Orange Bowl, where Braxton Miller and his Ohio State Buckeyes are about to take on Taj Boyd and the Clemson Tigers. Ohio State is 24-1 under current head coach Urban Meyer, and in order for that record to improve tonight, Braxton Miller has to be the dual threat quarterback he's been all season long. For Clemson, however, it just comes down to limiting turnovers. Turnovers have been the deciding factor in both of Clemson's losses this season and just might become the deciding factor here tonight. It's the Discover Orange Bowl. The Clemson Tigers from the ACC in their second Orange Bowl in three years taking on the Ohio State Buckeyes out of the Big Ten in what would prove to be one of the best Discover Orange Bowls in recorded history. Opening drive of the game, and it's Taj Boyd who's going to hit Roderick McDowell out of the backfield for the first down. Then he tries it on the ground and finds 58 yards on the quarterback draw. Touchdown, Clemson Tigers. They were out in front. Ohio State with a fourth and short. They fake the punt, and it's Jeff Hewerman getting the direct snap. Picking up the five yards, keeping the drive alive for the Buckeyes. And they would capitalize as Braxton Miller fakes the option, takes it to the outside, touchdown Ohio State, and they would tie it right back up. Clemson now up 14 to seven, and they forced an OSU punt, but the Buckeyes are able to down the ball at the Clemson one. Taj Boyd doesn't have anywhere to go, throws it away. It's ruled intentional grounding, safety, Ohio State, Creeping back up, 14 to nine. Second quarter now, and it's Sammy Watkins getting the screen pass. He's able to turn it up the field for 20 harder in yards. Then it's Taj Boyd not being able to find anything, so he keeps it on the ground himself, gets it down to the eight yard line. Third down now, Clemson runs play action, throws a jump ball out to Martavis Bryant, giving the Tigers a 20 to nine lead. Clemson was up, but Ohio State would respond. Braxton Miller, keeping it himself, calling his own number. Touchdown, Ohio State, and it would be 22 to 20 at halftime. Adjustments made, Gatorades drank, second half now, and the Ohio State Buckeyes would add to their lead as Carlos Hyde, who was hurt in the second quarter, takes the ball and rumbles down to the one yard line. Later in the drive, he's gonna jump it in himself. Touchdown, Ohio State, and they were up 29 to 20. Clemson will be forced to punt on their ensuing drive, but Corey Brown muffs it, and it's Clemson ball again. Then it's Taj Boyd going up top, finding his boy Sammy Watkins, getting it closer for Clemson, 29 to 27. Braxton Miller going back to work for Ohio State. As he finds Carlos Hyde on the wheel route, then he comes back with a little play action throwback to Carlos Hyde, touchdown, Buckeyes 35 to 34 the Buckeyes found themselves on top then it's Taj Boyd using a great play call of his own to Stanton Seconder touchdown Clemson they were back out in front and they wouldn't look back as after turnovers the Buckeyes have the ball two minutes left and can't seem to get anything going as Stephon Anthony picks it off and Dabo Sweeney and the Clemson Tigers celebrate their team's first BCS victory as the Tigers defeat the Buckeyes 40 to 35 in a great back and forth game. Sammy Watkins was named game MVP with a Discover Orange Bowl record 16 catches 
for 227 yards. This was definitely a Discover Orange Bowl for the ages. And there you have it, guys. What a game. The Clemson Tigers take it 40-35 to in the last BCS Discover Orange Bowl. MVP Sammy Watkins broke an Orange Bowl receiving record tonight in an offensive and defensive battle on the field that ended with the Tigers on top. Buckeye fans may have been shocked by the final score, but our famous Finn friend of the Orange Bowl predicted the outcome. Flipper the Dolphin has correctly picked the winner of the Orange Bowl for the fourth straight year. We were there when our bottled nose buddy made his selection back in December. Hi, I'm Andrew Hertz. I am president and chair of the Orange Bowl committee this year, and we are here at beautiful Miami Sea Aquarium to have Flipper pick the winner of this year's game between Ohio State University and Clemson University. It is a big year for us down here in South Florida. It's the 80th Orange Bowl game, and Flipper, which was shot right here at Miami Sea Aquarium, is celebrating his 50th anniversary of being on the air. And so uh, we're here because this is now the fourth year in a row Flippers picked the winner of the Orange Bowl game, and he is 3-0 so far, so let's see who he selects. Well, the results are in. Flipper has made his selection, and Obi, tell us what that is. It's the Clemson Tigers. Wow, four years in a row. Does he pick the Florida lottery numbers too? <laughs> I don't think so, but we'll find out if Flipper can make it five in a row next year. We have a lot of show left, so don't change the channel. When we come back, we'll give you a front row seat to some of the fun the Clemson Tigers and Ohio State Buckeyes players participated in while in South Florida. And we will also show you how the Orange Bowl made one boy's wishes come true at the 2014 Discover Orange Bowl when inside the Orange Bowl returns. When was the last time someone dropped more than $800 at your door? Or you picked up nearly $790 at the corner gas station? For Miami Herald readers, it was last Sunday and every Sunday. Because each week, the Sunday Miami Herald is packed with hundreds of dollars in store coupons. Use them regularly and the savings add up. Big time. <laughs> Serious coupon savings. Another reason it just wouldn't be Sunday without the Sunday Miami Herald. Life happens. Florida Blue is here for you with a variety of health plan options, health and wellness consultants, fitness programs, local agents across the state, and much more. Florida Blue, in the pursuit of health. People wonder why I buy so many tickets to Orange Bowl games and events. Morning. Maybe it's because the dollars I spend find their way back to the South Florida community. And that helps make it a better place. <laughs> for everyone. Or maybe I just can't live without legendary college sports and entertainment. Either way, I win. Hope will grow. Muscles will ache. Battles will rage. Faith will deepen. Greatness will prevail. Moments will amaze, fans will rejoice, and new rivalries will emerge. This is ACC Football. Welcome back to the season finale of Inside the Orange Bowl. The two teams selected to play in the Discover Orange Bowl are always in for a treat. During this year's six-day stay, the Orange Bowl committee made sure to show teams and their fans some of the great things South Florida has to offer. Here's a glimpse of this year's Bowl Week. Bowl Week Spotlight, presented by Sun Life Stadium and the Miami Dolphins.
this just sets up for another opportunity for us to go out there and show the country what we can do. Uh, big stage, big venue, uh, beautiful city. We're excited about a great team we're going to play against, and uh, we get a chance to go out there and just lay it on the line. Man, you know, you come out here with some shorts, and the short sleeve shirt is, is good. You know, coming from uh, Ohio, you know, it's like 40 degrees outside, raining and stuff, so it feels good. Many of them been to a beach or even this this area, so it just it, this is like a once in a lifetime experience for some of these guys. I'm loving it, man. Miami's awesome. Do a lot of things like this back home in Clemson, and so for them to be able to come down here and, and uh, you know take a moment out of our week, you know, we've been receiving a lot all week. You know, it's a great opportunity to come and, and uh, give back. It's, it's what it's all about. It's uh, we definitely don't. Don't take lightly to, to people thinking it's going to be a high-scoring game because that's our job is to prevent them from scoring and try to keep as low as possible. And and, and we just we're not trying to get one less stop than them, and we're not competing against their defense. As I watched the film, their front seven, you know, they're, they're real. You know, there's some real dudes up there. You know, they got some, uh, some great interior D linemen and some outside D linemen. You know, that, that that fly off the ball. You know, their linebackers play great with the D line. You know, they all click together. I mean, it was a great experience, uh, first of all. Uh, just like this experience has been great. You know, the Discover Orange Bowl, the, the folks here, unbelievable. I mean, just the, everybody wants to be in the Orange Bowl. Everybody, every coach, every player in the whole country uh, wants to have a chance to be in the Orange Bowl. And uh, that was a wonderful experience for us uh, outside of the result. You know, we did, we, you know, but as far as the game, I mean, the biggest thing, I mean, if we, if we could take care of the ball, uh, uh, you know, that, that's the one thing you change. And then obviously, I've been to the Orange Bowl before when Eric Palm gave me the call and said, you guys are in. And then we started playing Clemson. It was, it's, I can't say it's over because it's never over. You always remember that. However, uh, the feeling was, let's go have a great time. Let's go play a great team and get ready to go. So. The Orange Bowl supports numerous South Florida organizations and strives to provide unique opportunities for those in need. One of the organizations the Orange Bowl consistently partners with is the Make-A-Wish Foundation of South Florida. The Orange Bowl was more than happy to turn one teen's 2014 Discover Orange Bowl experience into a memory he'll never forget. For most college football fans, a bowl game is a unique opportunity to have fun seeing their team play in a different city against an opponent they might never otherwise play. But for one young man, the 2014 Discover Orange Bowl was extra special. Thanks to the Orange Bowl and the Make-A-Wish Foundation of South Florida, Tyler Guzmer got a special VIP access to the game and all of its festivities. Hours before the game, he got a chance to walk the Orange Bowl field in a still empty Sun Life Stadium, as well as get a tour of the team's locker rooms. As the teams were starting to arrive, Tyler got a chance to eat and relax at the Orange Bowl's VIP party before heading back down to the field to watch the teams warm up and all of the pregame festivities. It was there on the field we were able to catch up and talk with him. How excited are you for today's game? I'm very excited. I'm excited to see Ohio State play. Excited to see a close matchup and just some good football. 
Well, Tyler, thank you so much. Is there any other surprises that you can't wait to see? Um, the, the VIP suite, I'm pretty excited to see that. For all the very important people out there? Yes. Ho I can't wait to go in there and just sit, look, look over to my mom and say, Mom, do you feel important yet? After taking some pictures with some of the Clemson players and cheerleaders, it was time for kickoff, and Tyler was able to watch the first half of the game and the halftime performance by Dirks Bentley from the sidelines. He went up and watched the second half from a Sun Life suite before coming back down to the field for the post-game trophy presentations. Though his Buckeyes may have lost, there is little doubt that the memory of being there at the 2014 Discover Orange Bowl is one that Tyler will always cherish. Someone dropped more than $800 at your door, or you picked up nearly $790 at the corner gas station. For Miami Herald readers, it was last Sunday, and every Sunday. Because each week, the Sunday Miami Herald is packed with hundreds of dollars in store coupons. Use them regularly, and the savings add up. Big time. <laughs> Serious coupon savings. Another reason it just wouldn't be Sunday without the Sunday Miami Herald. I built this. You did? Yeah, I built this park. Come on, Dad. Remember last year when I took you to that Orange Bowl football game? Yeah. Well, all the money from those tickets went right back into the community to help restore this park, Orange Bowl Field at Moore Park, and coming soon, Ives Estates in Miami-Dade County. So, did I help build this park too? <laughs> I guess you did. Hope will grow. Hearts will race. Voices will rise. Teams will triumph. Champions will emerge. Trophies will hoist. Tears will flow. And memories will forge. This is the ACC. Florida Blue is here for you with a variety of health plan options, health and wellness consultants, fitness programs, local agents across the state, and much more. Florida Blue, in the pursuit of health. While the media debated over this year's Discover Orange Bowl matchup, the Orange Bowl had plenty of non-football related activities going on, including the 20th annual Metro PCS Orange Bowl Basketball Classic. The doubleheader at the BB&T Center in Sunrise, Florida on December 21st featured the Florida State Seminoles in the number 22 ranked University of Massachusetts Minutemen in Game 1, and the 16th ranked Florida Gators taking on the Fresno State Bulldogs in Game 2. The Seminoles sported turquoise colored uniforms for Native American Heritage Month. The goal was to highlight the importance of bringing sport and physical activity to Native American and Aboriginal youth. I'm not sure if the colors distracted the Minutemen, but apparently they were not aware of the Knolls' two seven-foot sophomores, Boris Bojanowski and Michael Ojo. Bojanowski tied an Orange Bowl Classic record with a career-high seven blocks. Ojo added two blocks, seven points, and eight rebounds. Sophomore Aaron Thomas finished with a game-high 18 points to earn MVP honors as FSU upset the previously undefeated UMass 60-55. Fresno State hoped to make it two upsets on the day when they took on the Florida Gators, and it seemed like that might happen as the Bulldogs only trailed by four at halftime. But in the second half, the Gators poured it on. They started the half on a 15-4 run and never looked back as Florida forward Casey Prather had a team-high 14 points and was awarded MVP as the Gators went on to beat the Bulldogs 66-49. Another recent Orange Bowl event was the fourth annual Orange Bowl Paddle Championship powered by Jimmy Lewis, which took place at the Bayside Marketplace in downtown Miami. Let's take a look at some of the day's competitions. 
Event Spotlight presented by Wells Fargo. The fourth annual Orange Bowl Paddle Championship powered by Jimmy Lewis took place on Sunday, January 12th. This was the season opening race in the Stand Up Paddling Splash Race Series and has the largest purse prize on the East Coast. Proceeds to the event benefited Big Brothers and Big Sisters of Greater Miami. The elite race began at Bayside Marina, sent paddleboarders on the ocean side of Brickle Key to a checkpoint near their causeway, then back north on the mainland side of Brickle Key, down the Miami River and back to return to the Bayside Marina. The three mile recreational race also begins at Bayside Marina and sends paddleboarders around Brickle Key to return to the Bayside via its ocean side. The two sprint races are roughly 100 meters each, begin at the Hard Rock Cafe and send paddleboarders to a checkpoint in the marina. It was a perfect day in South Florida to host this great event. When we come back, we'll introduce you to the new president of the Orange Bowl Committee, Louis Boue, as Inside the Orange Bowl continues. Inside the Orange Bowl is brought to you by Sports Authority, American Airlines, Doctors Hospital, Florida Blue, Fox Sports Florida, Sun Sports, Hampton Farms, Metro PCS, Nike, Sparkling Ice, Sun Life Stadium, Miami Dolphins, the Miami Herald, Toyota, Wells Fargo. When was the last time someone dropped more than $800 at your door? Or you picked up nearly $790 bucks at the corner gas station? For Miami Herald readers, it was last Sunday and every Sunday. Because each week, the Sunday Miami Herald is packed with hundreds of dollars in store coupons. Use them regularly and the savings add up. Big time. <laughs> Serious coupon savings. Another reason it just wouldn't be Sunday without the Sunday Miami Herald. Your wireless world is about to be brought. Metro PCS is here. Everything you want, $40, period. All the 4G speed you need, $40, period. Unlimited data, talk, and text on a nationwide 4G network. Even taxes and regulatory fees are rolled in. It's the power of the period. Everything you want, $40, period. Only at Metro PCS. Wireless for all. Join us for Miami Dolphins Summer Football Camps this June. Children ages 5 through 15 will be coached by former NFL players. Kids will be able to practice in the Dolphins training facility field as they develop skills in a fun and positive learning environment. All campers will receive Under Armour shorts and a jersey and will get to go on the field during a Dolphins football game. Winners of camp will receive a championship ring. Visit DolphinsAcademy.com or call 305-943-7272 for more information about the Miami Dolphins Summer Football Camps. When was the last time someone dropped more than $800 at your door? Or you picked up nearly $790 at the corner gas station? For Miami Herald readers, it was last Sunday and every Sunday. Because each week, the Sunday Miami Herald is packed with hundreds of dollars in store coupons. Use them regularly and the savings add up. Big time. <laughs> Serious coupon savings. Another reason it just wouldn't be Sunday without the Sunday Miami Herald. The Orange Bowl Committee is already making preparations for next season's Orange Bowl festivities. One of the first orders of business is the installation of the 2014-15 president. Vice Chair Louis Boue officially takes reins as president and chair of the Orange Bowl this year. We spoke to him about his journey and what to expect from the Orange Bowl during his term. Well, I became a member in 2006. My first involvement with the Orange Bowl was uh, when I was uh, a little boy, I remember that uh, the Orange Bowl was blacked out here in Miami. And I remember seeing the Penn State-Kansas game on TV the Saturday after it was played. And I uh, always tried my mom to get me to go to the Orange Bowl because I didn't understand what it was. 
uh, until later on when, uh, when I grew up and I ended up, uh, actually I ended up selling Cokes in the Orange Bowl back in 1971. And during the Orange Bowl, I was uh, cooking hot dogs in the West End Zone. And uh, it was the Nebraska LSU game. And I remember when we had a lull in uh, cooking hot dogs, I'd come out and watch the game. That was really the first Orange Bowl that I ever saw live. Once I'm installed as president, what I want to have is a smooth year. I want to have a good game. Uh, you know, with our new with our new situation, our new uh, our new uh, the bowl uh, deal, it gives us a chance to expose the Orange Bowl to a to a different type of of, of uh, team coming in. With our with the new deal that we have, we're going to have the ACC along with the Big Ten, the SEC, and Notre Dame. I think we're going to have more fa favorable matchups, and we're going to have a better date, which is December 31st. I'm excited about that. You know, one of the things that I learned a long time ago is that the only thing that's constant is change. Change is not bad. In, con in connection with the New Deal, we're also going to have playoff games here. Those playoff games are going to come in uh, actually the year after my year. And it's something new for the Orange Bowl in that we're going to have a game here other than a national championship game that is a meaningful game. It really means something. I'm excited about that. I'm excited about the new, the new environment that college football has been in, and I think it's for the best for the Orange Bowl. When I meet the new members and I meet uh, the new board members and we have the orientation, this is a treasure for South Florida. We've been here for 81 years now. I don't think there's anything else in South Florida that has lasted for 81 years. It's a constant. This is in the Chamber of Commerce. Every single member that's been here, both senior and active, really care about the Orange Bowl. They really care about the South Florida community and our interest is to do the best for both the Orange Bowl and the South Florida community. One of the things that, that really got to me this year when we were deciding to put on a bid for a national championship game is that every single member stated that that's what we do, that's what we want, that's what we're going to do. And one member said it's, a, it's in our DNA. Our, it's in our DNA to not only have a successful festival, but have successful games and successful events and to improve South Florida. And with that, we come to the end of the 2013-14 season of Inside the Orange Bowl. On behalf of the entire Orange Bowl staff and committee, we would like to thank you for joining us on the road to the 2014 Discover Orange Bowl. Now, we will leave you with some of the best moments of the year. I'm Andrea Ocampo. And I'm Jeter Kurtenbach. Until next time, make it orange.